Well, hello. Um, I'm recording this video for our course on discrete event simulation uh, with our students uh, from Ecole de Mindel B. Um, this course has several sessions, face-to-face -face sessions, autonomous sessions. Um, I'm just creating um, this video in order to give you, uh, give you a heads up of how we are going to use conveyors in our next uh, study cases. So uh, uh, the basic idea of this, uh, this exercise is that how uh, is to pick a, pro a sub product out of the world, ship it to the customers uh, by using two machines and having conveyors uh, between them. So I open the startup model. Um, let's see. Um, I will just choose a um, machine here. I will duplicate this machine like this. And um, I will choose a part um, like this box, and I will choose conveyors, which they will um, they will um, transport the parts uh, from machine one to the second one. Okay. Uh, now it's time to talk about um, conveyors. So, in conveyors, um, whatever name you want to give them, um, they, we have the length, which is based on the number of parts they can uh, move. Um, uh, which you can manipulate this data whatever you want. Uh, but the basic idea is here. The um, somehow important part is here. We have two. Um, main uh, types of conveyors, indexed ones and continuous ones. The indexed one is about conveyors that they are moving parts uh, with the same size, with the same shape. And the continuous one is about different sh shape and sizes. The however, the fixed one is about um, when there is a blockage in the conveyor, the whole uh, blockage in the machine, the whole, um, on some part, the whole uh, conveyor will stop. And the con the queuing one is it's accumulated one, so they will, um, uh, they will um, it's like exactly like in the supermarkets that what you see they will, they will uh, gather all the parts at the end of the conveyor. What we're going to use here uh, is um, indexed uh, indexed um, um, index queuing, for our example. Uh, we'll just add a cycle time of 2.5 uh, so be careful that here our conveyor is passive which means the first machine it will push the part on this one so it will wait and it will wait until the next machine pull the parts out of the conveyors okay so next uh, trick is that when you hold down the control key uh, you can just change the size of the conveyor Again, by holding down the control key at the middle of the conveyor, you can separate it to two conveyors and you can just um, enrich your, enrich the way you want to represent your process model like this. Next part is that you, if you hold down the shift key, and click on the middle of the conveyor and then let go of the shift and then hold down again the control key. You can now change the shape of the conveyor like this. Now I'm going to define the rules here just to show you how it works. I will click on the shift and I will change the size of my part here. So uh, please uh, consider that uh, this part that I'm... Um, wait. The part uh, we have here is passive, so we didn't um, cover this part in our face-to-face -face sessions. So um, the part is passive. That means the it will comes out of uh, word by by um, machine one, which which which, uh, which it will pull the part from the word. So you know how to use these functions or whatever. Uh, we go to the simpler one. We click on the visual input rule and then pull click on the part click on the board and the part
part it should be um, so I will show you again click on the machine pull Part and then word. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it happens to me. And okay, now it should work. Click on OK. Uh, next part we want to see is that to um, we want to push. Um, let's push the part to count one, and that's it. Click on the flow, and now you're able to see this one again. You know how it works here, just click on this one, pull from there, everything's fine. Click on OK. And uh, one thing I didn't define is that the cycle time, I will put this one 5, for example, I will put this one um, uh, 6. Or no, I will put this one 4.5, okay? Um, everything is fine. Ah, I didn't define this one. Push to ship. And... It's a single machine. Now uh, everything should work fine for us. So let's just see how our simulation work. Okay, you can see the movement on the sub product on the conveyor like this. Okay, I will stop the simulation. I will go from the beginning now. I want to define a labor rule uh, for the machines that they have breakdowns. Um, how the labor rule would work. Imagine in machine one, uh, we have a breakdown. For example, we define breakdowns um, based on the number of operation or based on the busy time, available time, whatever. Number of operation, we say um, we use. Uh, here we use uh, distributions and you can use the wizard whatever with the mean of and click on OK and now you will have the breakdowns what what we want to do is that we want a worker to service this uh, machine every time we have a problem so we add labor here Date. So we click on the machine one, which is at the breakdown. We go on the labor rule, and we change from we go to repair, and we just click on the labor, and that means every time we have a breakdown, this worker will service the machine. Click on save. Just check again. Repair, everything's fine. Okay. Now if I run the process step by step so the repair time is one so each time we'll have the breakdown the labor will solve the problem so um, I will change one thing here I will just in the breakdown I will change this distribution um, I will use uniform 2 to 10 and click on OK let's see we can see if we go step by step we can see 
if we have a breakdown, labor will uh, take care of the machine. That's the basic idea I wanted to show you. So I hope you found uh, this video helpful. And uh, in our face-to-face -face session, we'll cover this part and we'll um, somehow complete uh, the way we are going to use conveyors in our simulation models um, in our uh, upcoming face-to-face uh, -face sessions. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. And see you soon at a classroom.